Good morning, my award-winning carrier pigeon. And I know what you're thinking. What award did it win? Most improved. I was having a chat with my wife last night and I told her that I feel like I'm failing her and our family. Just where we are, like with my work here and financially. Um, not like in trouble financially, but I expected to be in a very different place at this time. So we were kind of talking about what's happened over the past four, five months since I quit my job and looking at all the setbacks in there. So I thought I'd go through them with you because I, I think they're quite interesting to share. But, you know, we're always, we're always trying to look at the idea of being a victim is not, is not something we're doing. We're not being victims here. We're always looking at things and thinking, how can we be, how can we turn this into a positive? So I just sat on the bike at the gym. I just sat there. I didn't, I didn't pedal or anything, <laughs> but I created the um, script for two videos. One is this set of blue light glasses that I just tried this morning. And another is for a lung trainer. Now it's a very rough script, but doing it just on my phone, and I think it took me maybe five minutes to write each script. Are they perfectly optimized? No, but I need to get better at how efficient I am at script writing and planning out these videos. And I think forcing myself to do it in a short time frame is pretty good and then I can come back to make slight changes. So let's go home, talk through these setbacks or just like see what they look like and then move on from there. Please understand this isn't a victim thing, all right? So, oh, I got sorry. Screen record, you dummy. Start recording. Okay. So let's say we have uh, we have a timeline that comes all the way across. Oh, bloody hell. You would have thought I'm a boomer. Here's our timeline, all right? So we got now. What 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 month is it? Let's let's just call it 0 to 24. And then down here we have uh I think 0, 09. 23. Okay, what happens at 0923? <clears throat> we have, I'm going to do it in red for dramatic effect. Woo! So at this point, we have, we'll call it, oh my gosh, quit job. Now, what happens here? I've talked about, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. I've talked about it a little bit, but I'm at this point, up until this point, I'm able to do my content creation on the side as well as my work. But I'm working with this lady, I'd say she's, <coughs> sorry, she's probably in her late 50s, early 60s. Uh, she's a boomer and <clears throat> mentality is, work is everything. You do everything you can for the employer. Uh, and anything else in your life comes secondary. So work-life balance, non-existent. She was also not married, no kids, no real family close, kind of sad. And I don't mean that condescending. But we get to a point in our project where she, we see a ton of work coming down the pipeline. We're working on this huge project, huge initiative for the company. See a ton of work coming. And we're both, sorry, we're both project managers in IT. And one day she says to me, like, all this work's coming like three months down the pipeline. And she says, Oliver, I want to know that you, you have my back in this. I'm like, what, what do you mean have your back? She goes, well, we saw all this work coming down and it's going to be some, like, lots of long nights and long weekends for a couple of months. To which I replied, well, isn't our job as project managers to see this 
risk and find ways to mitigate it. She goes, no, no, as project managers, it's our job just to get it done. I'm like, Are you lo have you lost your mind? That is not our job as, like, that's, come on, dude, that is a terrible, that's a terrible way to go about this. Because then you and I have burnout, we make mistakes, we're not efficient, and things just, you know, if, if we're not organizing things properly, then things get missed, and that's where real issues occur. So I'm seeing this really from a, like, textbook project management perspective. She's not having any of it. She's really upset about it. And I'm in a position where it's basically, I probably get fired for not doing, oh, well, I either get fired for not doing the work, but then that sucks because that's my name. And I've essentially just told them, like I, I look useless and I like destroy my name. Pride, ridiculous thing. So I'm, the way I see it, I'm forced I either continue my, my safe job that I actually hated at the time, but keep getting a steady paycheck, or, and sorry, and at the time I have to give up content creation. Like this would never have started. I'd have to slow down on the rate I can make videos. I would have to sacrifice spending any time with my, with Ruger at the time, and any time with my wife. Just all of it comes around to me being extremely unhappy. Thankfully, financially, I was in a decent spot. I had a few good months to be able to quit my job and go full time on social media. But you know, it wasn't it wasn't the perfect spot. I didn't have the like longevity in place to be able to say, yeah, I can quit my job, and I know I have like the consistency each month. Long winded way of putting it. But I was forced into that decision, which is why I look at that position there as like that was bad. Like that was a setback because I wasn't making a decision on my own accord. I was forced into it. So we have quitting the job. That happens at 0923. And then I think maybe that same month I sign with a new manager. Now, I don't want to talk ill about specifics of this guy, but I was promised a lot of things going into that partnership. A lot of things. And none of them came to fruition. In fact, it set me back even further. We had, I was then no longer making any kind of pitches to brands myself. Anything that came into my inbox from brands, I was asking him to negotiate. He didn't negotiate higher rates on anything. And he still took his 20% out of that. So for like minimal effort on his part and no benefit to me, I lost out 20% of each of those deals. So that sucked ass. And then I wasted three months where I could have been looking for a different manager or could have been pitching myself or could have just been taking that 20% for myself because like any of the negotiations, I was in the emails, easy enough to do for myself. So that sucked ass. So that took us to, let's, let's call it December. Uh, we'll call this 09 still. We'll call this uh, December. What happens in December? We have like finish with manager. Yeah, we'll call it finish. Finish with manager. Oh no, we won't call it that. We'll call it the start of a new partnership. So I started talking with this. We d I did one deal, which is a pretty good deal. And things actually went really well. I did, got 2.1 million views, generated a pretty good relationship and partnership showing that they can trust me because the video, the original paid video flopped. I made some changes to it, still didn't work. I honestly, I'm not sure what was wrong with it, but I told them that I would make another video and that then got 2 million views. So good relationship set up there. But the problem was my contact, uh, if I, I tell you the breakdown, you have 
brand at the top. The brand hires agency. That agency then hires a specialist. And the specialist then hires a creator. And the creator has to then work with their... I was with my manager at the time, right? So he took his 20% out of that, which sucked ass. So speaking about numbers here, um, I won't talk actually in specifics, but you have a pretty, like a very considerable percentage. And I kind of mentioned it in yesterday's pod vlog at the, toward the end. Um, but this guy, I really like this guy, by the way, super nice guy. Uh, he's helped me learn a lot and I've had like, a, some really good conversations with him and it, he's really helped me take this new direction with how I approach brands and agencies to develop a relationship. So he, and I'm happy that he made this decision because for the reasons that he's explained to me, it worked out well. So he quit his job. He has given me some contacts, which is great, but then the guy at this agency also quit his job and so now my link up to this brand is pretty much non-existent after i built up all this goodwill so that sucks ass so those are two major setbacks in there and then i think the final setback which is the most uh, powerful of them all is covey in the NICU. So our child going to the intensive care. Thankfully, he's, he's doing fine, he's doing well, he's it's just repairing now, just gaining his strength back to feed properly. So that we can call that out of the woods, but what comes with that also is, like one of us is at the hospital, the other one's looking after Rugi, so I'm not like, I have maybe two hours a day to work. And so, oh, I should also mention in here, where we'll say in, yeah, somewhere in December, this is the worst layout I've ever seen, sorry. <laughs> somewhere in December, after I finish with this previous manager, I start communicating with this new manager. And he's a pretty big dog in the tech world. But he just keeps ghosting me. Like I'm, I feel like I'm being professional. I, I feel like I'm not being too overbearing. In fact, do you want to hear the last, you know, I'll read you the last message I sent to him. Uh, so this was Monday of last week. God, this, is, this one has been so shitty. Given this is your brand and our values align, I have every intention of sharing and upholding those values throughout our partnership. However, I'm really not sure what your expectations of me are, what I should expect of you from your offerings and next steps for the next one to three months and three months on. We don't have to do this by text, so let's set up a time late this week because I'm on the value side of things, I'm all in. Um, that was right after we'd had a call and the call ended as, okay, cool, let's, let's have another chat uh, and see where we go. And I'm like, honestly, my experience on this like manager brands agency side of this industry, aside from this, I don't want to say his name, but this, this specialist that I mentioned here, it's been so shit. It's been so shit. And I don't, I don't know if, I, I wonder if I'm the problem. I don't know if I am, but if I am, I don't know what to change just yet. But I think you, when you take a step back and you look at all these things that have happened, this doesn't mean that I've just had a terrible experience. It more so, I wanted to highlight the fact that like we all go through these troughs, these hard times, and it's what you learn from them or it, I'll just speak about me. It's what I'm trying to learn from them 
to adapt and take into the next time I do something. I mean, really, I would say all of these experiences, especially the manager experiences in here, have helped me get to a place of how I need to develop these relationships with the brands and agencies. I always, I was always shied away from it because I've thought, excuse me, I thought I'm going to have to go to all these events. I'm going to have to meet people in person. I'm going to have to keep uh, messaging them. And like, I, I was thinking about this from like a buddy, buddy perspective, like being friends. And then if they have something, they can pass it on to me. That just seemed ridiculous. But now I've, now I've seen the idea of providing value and becoming a resource for them. I feel like that's a much better approach and the fact that I enjoy talking about this stuff. And this way, I get to, I get to educate these brands and agencies on like content as a whole, but also on how my content is going to help them achieve their goals. If I understand their goals at a deeper level because we've, we've formed some kind of partnership versus just an email of like, we've got this campaign, these are our general goals of it. I can really understand like how these people think and then help sculpt something that fits in with them. Also, if, if an opportunity arises out of all of that, you then skip the the percentages, you, you skip the 20% on the manager here, you skip the percentage on the specialist, you skip the percentage on this agency, and the brand just pay you directly. And so you're able to not only one, charge a higher rate because you're skipping out all of those extra costs, but because or if you're able, if I'm able to develop a relationship with them of I'm providing them value, they are more likely to offer a higher rate. Well, hopefully, they're more likely to offer a higher rate to me or be willing to pay a higher rate because they see the value that they've received. You could see this from like a manipulative, oh, we owe this guy or I'm doing this because I want them to owe me. A bit of a Dwight Schrute, Andy Bernard moment. Um, I'm not, I don't want to see it like that. But I guess the underlying part of it kind of is. Right, like, because I, I love talking about this stuff. Kind of having self-realizations at the moment. I love talking about this stuff, so that's where I get a benefit out of it. But I am also really hoping that I can learn a lot and develop some kind of partnerships for deals along the way. I think, I think that's it. Like I'd really want to be in a place where I have an idea and I already have these relationships with these brands that I can have this idea and be like, here's this idea, you trust me, I trust you, let's do it. Would you be, would, like I can come up with ideas that align with their values and their campaign goals and we can just run with it instead of, waiting for everything to come in and expecting someone else to do the pitching for me when they don't have the same vision as I do. Of course, like, why would they? Because it's my vision. Okay. That was a crazy way of going around it, but in case you're wondering what the glasses are I mentioned, oh, where have I even put them? Bro, what did I do with them? I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let me, I'll find the lung trainer thing and the glasses I was talking about and I'll, give me a second. Okay, so this is, <clears throat> this is the, resistance breathing training, so the lung trainer. Oh, 
bit of spit on there. And what I thought was, so this turns it, the resistance up and down. And what I thought was that it's meant to make it more difficult for you to breathe, but actually it's meant to train your output. So you breathe in through your nose and then slowly breathe out through this. All right, so we'll give that a go. I'm not sure how long you do it for or anything, but... Um, it looks like you have to do it. So it says, in the early stage, adaptation is the main focus and deep inhalation and exhalation are the first steps. Groups can be done in t 10 to 20 groups and can be added if it can be easily completed. I take it... I don't know what that means. It can also be for a duration of unit of measurement based on individual physical fitness training for five to 20 points. That doesn't really tell me how to use it. So I'm not really sure. I think I'll just maybe, I don't know, try breathe. Breathing through it for a long time. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. That's one of them. The other is this. So, there's a light in there. This is meant to help reset your circadian rhythm. So if I turn off this, you can see it's meant to be like daylight in your eyes. So when I normally wake up at 5 a.m., it's obviously pitch black outside. But I tried these quickly this morning and you have to have a second light to see what you're doing in the morning because or you can you can't you can't see anything because there's just this light like your exposure is is all way off um it's like if you point like if you take your iphone camera point it at a really bright light you won't be able to see anything else around that bright light because of the way the exposure sets itself and it's no different with your own eyes but this is meant to fake sunlight so that you have, I don't know, so you reset, so you can set your circadian rhythm. So it feels like you're hitting sunlight first thing in the morning. I don't know. I saw the Wolverhampton Football Club, the soccer club in England, using these. They were wearing them before an evening game to try and help set their body as if it was like broad daylight outside. I think that's a, that's a horrible way I mean, that's just like, if it works, that's a crazy way to set up your body. Like, hey guys, you have an evening game at nine o'clock or 7.30 tonight, but we're gonna um, help your body fake and think that it's 9 a.m. in the morning or 12 o'clock midday. So that when you finish the game, your body has no idea what time of day it is and you can't sleep. That's a terrible idea, so stupid. Is, is that not the dumbest idea when rest and recovery is meant to be the most important thing to an athlete? Stupid. Okay, I'm going to try and get... I'm going to get one of these... Um, yesterday I filmed how many shots of sparkling water can I take in 60 seconds. Awful challenge, by the way. So I'm going to edit that quickly. And then, oh, do I want to do that? I kind of, here's how the day looks. It's 7.20 now. I've done a bit of work here. The wife has just left, got to the hospital, so <laughs> we're going to be breastfeeding him. He's at a place where he can start feeding. Nipple versus bottle. We had a terrible thing with Ruger and my wife had to pump for like 12 months. Hang on a minute. <laughs> my wife, I don't know why, my wife FaceTimes something that could always be a text. Like, just that, did you leave the charger up at the hospital? Yes, that could have been a text. <laughs> um, I was saying, yes, so my wife's going to be at the hospital until about four o'clock and then we'll switch over. 
and I'll be there for the evening, probably till about 7.30ish. So I only really have maybe an hour now before the little man wakes up and maybe an hour when he's asleep for his nap later. So we're going to try and cram his in as much as possible. I'm just trying to figure out what is the best thing I need to do. I think I need to get a video made You know what? Those haven't been doing well. I do want to do one, but I want to spend a bit of time working on the soda video, the changing water with soda. So let's make a quick plan of that. I would like to limit myself on this. Let's try five minutes. All right, so uh, soda with Coke. Soda with water. That's the wrong way around, but get the idea. Okay, what happened, Oliver? The want was to, how do people only drink soda feel? Pen's running out. Okay, so how do they feel? Point of no return is drinking in car. The catch is that um, drinking in car, uh, I think I had a wince on my face, but normally, like normally the first few sips are really tasty, aren't they? Um, first two sips, extra tasty. The catch, um, guilt as dentist for son, like as I went to the dentist for some. And then throughout the day, um, What did I do? I so like, where shall I say that I realized? Um, let's say realized one serving equals more than daily allowance, which is bloody awful. And I realized that I had to drink, what is, oh, the crisis point is the, um, what's it called? The depression, depression and stomach issues. Uh, and I would have to address, how many servings would I have to have had? I can't remember the exact number, but servings required uh, plus sugar amount. Um, Didn't really, I didn't really have time to feel dehydrated, so I think we can then go straight into here. Um, say taste was like overwhelming and too sweet. So then <clears throat> we have the depression and stomach issues. And it was like the climactic choice is do I just go, just go full depression and go suicidal? Or, uh, I, 
let, let's not think about it like that. Let's just think, what did I, what did I do? Depressed, depression stomach for two hours. And then I decided to chug water and exercise. Uh, oh wait, give up, because I did give up, and I think that's okay to give up on something like that. 16 seconds. Finale is I'm just going to stop the timer at six seconds because that's a horrible noise. I don't really know. How do I finish the video off? I don't want to be too like, you know, I realize that we should only drink water and soda's just not worth it. I'm not really sure how the ending goes. Um, yeah, but I think I can make a quick script out of this. Let's try it. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so I'm going to switch around the setup want that wasn't it, with the, this shouldn't be stakes, this should be the catch. So yeah, I need to update this, don't I? Uh, so hook, what happens to your body if you switch daily water intake with soda? Um, what did I just delete? I don't, I don't think I want the reason in there. So we have the setup want, but I, we've talked about this before, kind of that the setup want should come after the point of no return. You want to show the viewer that you're getting into it first. <clears throat> so point of no return is... Um, I started the morning off with a refreshing dose of sugar. I started the morning off with a refreshing dose of sugar and it And the first few sips always taste amazing, but that quickly turns, but that quickly turns I'd like to get to a space where instead of typing all this out, I just have, I use this and then I just say something. Should we try it? It's a risk. I'm not really in the place to be trying risks at the moment. I need, I need to get, because of how limited my time is, I need to get views back up, make some money, and then we can experiment a bit more. I started the morning off with a refreshing dose of sugar 
and the first few sips always taste amazing. No, it's not very powerful, is it? Start of the... I always find this part is, like just, just throw ideas down, just say what you're thinking. And the first few sips were extra tasty. Well, actually tasty, but I felt serious guilt as I took my son to his dentist appointment with a bottle of soda in hand. Uh, I've always been amazed. I've, I've always been curious as to how... I've always been curious grammatic issues. I've always been curious how people who only drink soda actually feel throughout the day. And set out to test it for my... S no, I think this is where I can state how much I have to drink. which meant I had to drink, is it 190 fluid ounces of Dr. Pepper today? The, um, <clears throat> let me get onto the servings. This um, at this point, I'm talking about how, like when I realized that one serving of Dr. Pepper has more than your daisy, daily allowance. After the first serving, I made the mistake of reading the ingredients and realized just that one serving had more than my daily allowance of sugar. And I had to drink. What is a serving? A serving's 12 fluid ounces. So if you've got 190 divided by 12, oh no, it wasn't 90, it was 90 fluid ounces. <laughs> Dude, I would be a heifer. Okay, so 90 divided by 12. And I had to drink seven and a half servings. I then made an even bigger mistake of weighing out just how much sugar I'd have to consume for this challenge, which amounted to 
210 grams, wasn't it? So if we do... Hang on a minute. I thought... Uh, uh, male sugar intake, 36 grams. So I want to do 39 times 7.5. 292.5 grams, which amounted to, which came to, I then made an even bigger mistake of weighing out just how much sugar I'd have to consume for this challenge, which came to 292.5 grams. Two nine two point five divided by thirty six. No, that was over eight times the recommended sugar. recommended daily daily sugar intake. I'll have to reword that. I'm not sure how that makes sense. That's where I show how much sugar I have. By the third serving, Even midway through the first serving, the taste was far too sweet and I was I want to say that um, like I didn't want the next drink. Hating? No. Even midway through the first serving, the taste was far too sweet. Uh, the, the taste was making me feel sick. The sweetness was... Even midway through the first serving, the sweetness was making me feel sick. But by the... I think it was the fifth serving. I was in a horrible place. I think I have some pretty good live action footage from the pod vlog that I can use for this, but I want to put down a general idea here before I go and look at that. I guess I could just go and look at that, couldn't I? Excuse me. Excuse me. The banana. Maybe I can. I think I can say that. I don't know what the finale is. Let's see what I do at the end here. Maybe I'll see you in a bit, maybe 
not, me, it's time to say to do this after the gym. Focus tomorrow and build out the story. I think we've got enough. This is the end. Did I? We'll shoot so much intro for tomorrow and build out the story. I think we've got enough for it. No planning. It's time to say to do this after the gym or something. And it was awful. I shouldn't have done it. Maybe I'll finish with that. And it... And it was awful. I shouldn't have done it. Okay, I think that puts us in a pretty good place for this script. Even that, even this whole process, I thought took me too long. I'd like to speed that up a lot more. The way I did these first two videos this morning. Um, all right, I think I just, I'll start. I can record this bit. I'll check through the footage, but yeah, let's record it. All right, I had this pretty wild thought, but let me start out. I realized I haven't actually tested the noise cancellation in the car or I heard it back and forth. So this is noise cancellation on. And then if I'm talking now, this is noise cancellation off. This is me talking to myself to see if it will make much of a difference. Okay, we'll go back with it on. All right. So I thought about that. And then I started thinking, how would I, what would I do to like market this product in my style of content, which is like super slow and easy and like authentic. And so like just a bringing it up again, <clears throat> like doing that quick test. And then I thought, oh, that's actually quite a smart technique to do on purpose if you if I were to like be marketing something else in future because like let's say again this is kind of wild but like let's say you have like a Casey Neistat type of audience or an audience that are so what you know whatever Casey does I'm doing if you have that kind of audience just a small mention like that could sell a product again All right, I, so I've been, I wanted to get the soda instead of water video done. I've gotten most of the way through it. I managed to get quite a lot done this morning before you wake up, woke up, and then I haven't really been able to touch it since. Over lunch, I had a pretty interesting call, which I'll get onto in a second, but it's, I, I like how the video looks. It's more like my older style without so much drama, but it also feels more, more um, natural. I don't, I, think, I don't think, I think I'll start using the word natural instead of authentic. I just, I don't, me no like. Yeah, it feels quite good. I have to chop it down a bit because it's a bit longer. It's like a minute 30 or something. And I'll see if I can cut it down. I don't, I don't want, I, I guess I am cutting it down for the sake of cutting it down. So it's shorter for retention wise, but also I don't want to do that. Like, I feel like there are bits in there that are fun, but I just don't think they'll perform on TikTok, like Dustin, you'll know what I'm talking about. Pauses, for example, that like dramatic pauses. I just, they just don't do well on TikTok. I've tried and I've tested. Don't do well unless the viewer is someone who really likes your content because then they're more willing to stay and watch. But as we've talked about on TikTok, the majority of your views are not going to come from your followers. Okay, this call I had was the first call out of this new speaking with agencies brands project. Um, I, you know, it was, I did have an in for this one. So the guy that I worked with on one deal that was the I think 
specialist in the um, screen recording we did earlier. He put me in touch with someone at another company that that he is uh, pretty good, you know, pretty buddy buddy with, and worked with quite tightly on some things. And he let them know that I would be contacting them. I created a pitch email, which was more along the lines of uh, a some really small bit about me and another paragraph, only like three lines or something, if that, kind of suggesting what we could, uh, sorry, I guess the pitch of, like, I, it would be good if we could connect and like I can be a resource as a creator for you. So I would say right now, one for one, because it went really well. Uh, again, although there is an underlying goal of hoping that this person either can offer partnerships if they you know like the way we communicate or is able to mention my name to someone else or recommend me to someone else. That's, that's always an underlying goal. Um, but as a conversation, I thought it went really well. Um, I don't know if I can, I, I, if I should talk too much about the specifics, um, because I felt like that was somewhat in confidence, like it's not just meant to be public knowledge. It's funny how I just, Like the passion, is so that's a stupid way to say it. The interest, the interest I have in making content and thinking about content and thinking about the psychology or the science behind it. <clears throat> I didn't think I'd be interested in something as much as I am. But that, that's also strange. I, I guess, like, I don't do research, like reading research. I feel like the people making articles, actually, there are a couple of people that I trust. I think Jay Alto would be one of them. He, I, I, I may be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure his come up came from thumbnail creation or thumbnail ideation with huge names, huge YouTubers, tubers. And then he's been uploading quite consistently on his channel with some pretty insightful, interesting pieces, which makes me wonder if I should break down and just, and take the sections that I talk about content and like post those as their own videos. I wonder if that would be quite good, but you know, it's tough to, I, you know, I have created a second channel called Oliver Wright Segments or Pod Vlog Segments, which could be that. Don't know. Also, the how many type videos, like how many pistachios can I crack in 60 seconds? I think I have to tweak something to that because the two videos I posted, one was super basic, the other was had a couple of edits in it. It was a bit more edited. Neither of those performed well at all. In fact, they by far my worst performing videos in a long time. Like one of them only just ticked over a thousand, almost forty eight hours later. And the other one I think only got to twenty four hundred in 72 hours or something. So I've got to tweak something in there. Not sure what that is yet. Or if I just need to post more of them. Don't know. But we'll see. Anyway, at the hospital now, so I'm going to go see the little man. But I'm not going to be here too long. Just wanted to come in after Shay's been here all day. All right, I will speak to you in a bit. Oh, you know what would be absolutely crazy is if I was filming and someone, I hope this never happens, someone came in and collided with me in this direction. Like, 
oh man, that would be a crazy video to watch back because like you could see it. Like if they're coming straight and I'm stopped, you could see the whole thing coming in. Like knowing what's about to happen or not knowing. You pleb. All right, see you in a bit. I only really have two things. I'll try and make it quick, save, save you some time as if like I could just not film this. <laughs> uh, first thing is I have this ridiculous desire that when I see two people that are stood somewhat close to each other, texting, like, you guys texting each other? It's stupid, like it's not funny. No one would laugh. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing, just super weird. I'm sure we all do this, but I guess it's more for like the realization of it. The conversation I had earlier with a lady at this brand, this, sorry, at this agency, <clears throat> the intro to the conversation went well the whole conversation went well we had to end it not really early we didn't really set a time to finish it it's just kind of a pretty loose call um but i had to stop the call because rugi woke up it was a pretty abrupt ending and there's like just a weird part of me that like, has this obsession with the fact that, oh gosh, it was, did something happen in that conversation? Was she not, did she not like find it valuable? Or I could have said this that would have been more valuable. And just like overthinking everything and there's really nothing there, like it ended well. Our conversation was really good up to the moment we had to finish. It's just like that overthinking stuff. I was thinking about this walking into the hospital, but just like, thinking through these things. And then it, it took me a while before I thought, you know, just stop. Like everything went well. There's nothing for you to be concerned with or worried about or like wish you would have done differently. I, mm, I will say, I'm not second guessing myself now, but I will say that when talking about examples as a creator. I obviously talk about my experiences and the way I would do things. But I imagine that she is, what I'm thinking about now is I imagine she's looking for a pretty wide, what would a creator do? What does the normal creator do? I don't feel like I'm the normal creator. I really don't, for better or for worse. So I wonder if I can, like th that was my first time really doing this, trying to provide value in this world. I don't know, I don't know how the normal creator, the average creator thinks through these things. So it's hard to give an answer on that, but I just have to give it from my perspective. And I saw, I, I mean, I hope that I think my perspective is very useful. <laughs> of course I do. But I, I'm sure I, I will get better at providing valuable insight and like articulating what I'm actually thinking and what I'm trying to say and the reasons that I do things that have probably become quite second nature at this point. All right, cool. Let's finish it there. I hope you've had a good day and we'll see you tomorrow. Yes.